y'all get a nap this afternoon? We have to check every Sunday night. I just want to know. I believe, it's in the, I believe it's in the church bylaws. You must check to see how many people got a nap this from Sunday. Sometimes my strategy to keep from crying is to find something to laugh about. And that's what we're going to do tonight. Um, and of course, you know, of course we've had some music, you know, but there needs to be some singing. But, but uh, we're not going to do any congregational singing. Uh, I'm going to sing. <laughs> I'm going to sing you a little song. And... Uh, Ladies, I know we didn't talk about it, but don't worry. I'm going to sing Acapulco tonight. <laughs> and we're going to be okay. And uh, someone gave me a song here, and, and it is so good. I, I'm not going to mention any names, but he sure did pray a fine prayer a while ago. <laughs> he, uh, and, and this song was just written for this occasion. And so I'm going to sing it, and, and I hope it touches your heart like it, like it touched mine. From Mount Edna they say you are leaving We will not shed a tear when you go <laughs> For you stepped out of line once too often And offended your church members so <laughs> Oh, you told us we all should be tithers when you said it, you looked straight at me. <laughs> and from that time till now, I've been angry. For I'm saved by grace, which is free. <laughs> oh, you told us to visit our neighbors and to tell them the gospel so true but we've not spoken once to our neighbors since July of 2002 <laughs> no it's not that we don't admire you you're a good man so far as that goes but you must learn to stick to the gospel and stay off of your church members' toes. <laughs> and stay off of your church members' toes. <laughs> and stay off of your church members' church members' toes. Concludes the music for tonight. All right. I want to keep you informed. I know you've been kind of blind about this. <laughs> now comes the good part. All right. We uh, we got a treat for you tonight. You know, thank you for putting all those photos together. That was great. And but you know, if we looked at all the photos that we all had with this family and Pastor Green impacted our life, we'd be here all night. Or if everyone spoke, we'd be here all night. And we ended up, end up crying and whatnot. So we thought we would just pull some key strategic people from the congregation and the community to share with us what they have on their heart. And so we have several people here. One is Jackie Allison, a fine church member and deacon. Come on down here. Yeah, make haste, young man, make haste. Ken Fowler is one of our, he's the tallest deacon. <laughs> Bill Goodwin. Bill Goodwin is, a, is our Yankee chairman of deacons from Montana. I don't know how that happened. You know. uh, Mickey Connolly is going to be late. He, Mickey's not a member of the church, but he's a supposed friend of the pastor. And... Uh, and we looked for another friend, couldn't find another one in the county, so we went to Spartanburg. Tom White is here tonight. He's going to share what he has in his heart. Come on down, Tom. And Benny, 
I just broke my rule. Benny, we need you to come up here. Come on, old buddy. Be seated right over there next to the to the podium, and, and we're gonna be. We just wanted you to be up here, right in amongst us, and uh, and at the end we'll give you a short period of time to, uh, for response. Say two seconds, maybe. Something. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. We're gonna start right here on this end, and then work our way down. So Jack, you go right ahead. Good to have everybody here tonight. Uh, glad that you can be here to celebrate this 13 years of ministry with Pastor Benny and his family. Uh, I was going to start tonight off with uh, the top 10 reasons that Pastor Benny would be going to Northbrook Church. Uh, I know there's a lot of people question this. And, uh, <laughs> Free range, you know. I <laughs> and uh, Pastor Benny mentioned this morning he was scared about what uh, Adam Trumper might do. You have been thinking of me. <laughs> so uh, I researched these uh, reasons and, and find them to be true and correct. And I hope that all you guys enjoy. Them, okay. Let me buy 
the way, mention also that uh, I asked Payne Burnett here to sit in for the drums. I don't know what I was thinking earlier in the week, but I thought about asking Benny to play the drums. And I said, I must be out of my mind to put Benny on the snare drum. We never would have got out of here. <laughs> so reason number four now that Benny would be leaving to go to Northbrook. That would be, they told Benny at Northbrook, they would cut the grass at his new house after seeing how much grass he had at the old house. <laughs> Benny jumped all over that one. <laughs> yes, sir, sign me up. <laughs> and reason number three that Benny would be going to Northbrook. <laughs> and that was, number three is, there's a lot of, my net the golfers. Been wanting me to play golf with us for years and years. But he said he couldn't make it because why did he? Golf makes a preacher cuss. at the Baptist Church that he would never have the prettiest bald head until <laughs> and unless myself and Tom Schick were to leave him. <laughs> well, you know the three. <laughs> but uh, and it just, what I'm thinking about that, I've, I've got a little something here that uh, Tom was off, and he really didn't know it, but I've done this for me and Tom for Preacher Benny. And this is a special recognition. This is something really serious. Uh, I'm really pleased to give this to Benny. It says here, special recognition. This certified that Benny Green is uh, entitled to this certificate for the Hair Club of America on the 26th day of June, 2011. And I don't know. Number one reason Benny Green would be leaving us to go to Northbrook. And that is pretty, pretty simple. Uh, the reason Benny Green is going to Northbrook. Uh, Benny Green's got the Lord in his heart. He loves the Lord. And God came to him and uh, asked him to go. So he's going, y'all. Y'all pray for him. Thank you, Ladies and gentlemen, Ken Fowler. Ken, just share with us what's on your heart tonight. I have a lot on my heart that I looked at here and seen all these people. Alan called me up about the first part of the week and asked me if I'd do this. I said, do what? He said, just say something about Benny and say something funny. And I thought, Benny, funny? <laughs> <laughs> I told him I'd think about it. About three or four days later, he would call me and ask me if I was going to do it. He said, what we want to do is roast Benny. I said, roast? Roast? I think of barbecue. I looked up the definition of roast, roast and the guy that wrote the definition thought of barbecue. And I said, Benny's in trouble. But then I found another definition on Wikipedia. You can find anything there. And it says you can sit, stand up and you tell stories about the guest of honor and they can be true or untrue. <laughs> that was there. I started printing out proof. And since we're in church and Benny's a preacher, anything I say about Benny tonight could be true. 
You know, we came down here, uh, you know, I'm from here before some of you don't know, but I was born and raised here at uh, 17 and went to the Air Force and moved around quite a bit. But 2004, we moved back. But before we moved back, one Sunday, my brother, Jim, he's my big brother, uh, was home, and, and, and uh, we come to church on Sunday morning. And as we started leaving there, these two sweet, frail little ladies caught us by the arm, Miss Mary uh, Robinson and Miss Jane Jolly. And Mary says, we want to know who you are. <laughs> and Miss Janie, before we could ask, she said, you ain't getting our preacher. <laughs> she thought we were, they thought we were a, a corporate search committee. And I think if we had told them we were, them little lady would have body slammed both. <laughs> Well, after we moved down here, and of course started coming to church, still didn't know a whole lot about Benny and never met none of his family. And the first time I saw Benny and George together, I looked and I said, boy, the preacher sure has a very pretty daughter. <laughs> now I got to thinking, after I found out George was his wife, I said, you know, he was pretty smart. He wouldn't marry this very young, pretty girl so that when he gets old and bald, <laughs> he'll have a pretty wife. It worked. <laughs> you know, I gotta draw a little parallel here between myself and Benny. Uh, you're in the military, Anybody here has been in for a while, like, you know, retired. You average moving about every three years. And after you retire, every three years, you still get a stronger to move. <laughs> it's a virus. <laughs> I didn't know if preachers get that virus, too. We've been here since September of 04, not quite seven years yet. Benny Green has had three mailing addresses since we've been here and about to get his fourth. <laughs> well, I got another parallel there too. I used to buy a pickup truck and then I would fix that thing up. I would put everything on I wanted on it. You know, like bed cap, bed rail, bed liners, running boards. Bud flaps, fog lights, coon tail. <laughs> For you young people, that coon tail, years ago, cool guys had a car that ain't a coon tail on the end area. That's that thing that sticks up out of the fender. <laughs> I keep that thing a couple of years ago, trade it, and do it over again. And, and I did that about three times. And you know, I talk to myself a lot, and Barbara will verify that. And one day I, I got a thing and I said, Sal, why do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> well, I got to thinking about it and I said, next truck I get, I'm not going to do anything to it. I'm just going to keep that thing. I'm, I drove that thing for almost eight years. And I kept it until Barbara talked me into trading. You didn't talk me out of it, that's the same thing. <laughs> well, I've noticed these houses Benny buys. He goes and moves in and he fixes those things up. I mean, he makes a, a palace out of them. And then he sells them and moves and does it again. <laughs> Joyce's father. Uh -huh. My point is, George, when you get to Boiling Springs, take all the tools and hide them. You see Benny Green coming home with a two before taking it away and walk him with it. You may get to live there long enough to unpack. By the way, you keep your boxes when you move. 
<laughs> anyway, I just want to say, being here with Benny Green for the last almost seven years has been one of the highlights of my life. I got one more thing I got to say. This is real important. In, in the Bible, when you see the word hope, it means certain assurance. In Southern talk, that means ain't no doubt about it. <laughs> now, I remember telling Benny some while back, I said, Benny, I hope you're here as long as I am. Now, you're in the final moments of your time here. I want to revoke that. <laughs> know that uh, a couple years ago we uh, took a journey together and I've asked the uh, vice chairman of the uh, de uh, deacons for a special dispensation here we need to put Benny in period costume for the uh, RV trip He actually wore that one whole day and forgot that he had it on. <laughs> uh, so we went over to Anderson, looked out for a good RV, found what we thought was a good RV until it rained, the roof leaked. The holding tank was a little small when he left Hans's house uh, without dumping it. Uh, what smell was there? <laughs> a lot of smell. Radiator was a little small, so that turned the heater on also to uh, keep the engine cool with the smell. <laughs> yeah, speedometer didn't work, but GPS took care of it. But uh, while I was out at the shop, uh, we redid the roof, and Benny asked me to check some of the components. And I was inside checking the components, and as you know, in RVs, you've got to pull drawers out and get behind walls and all that. Well, I pulled one of the drawers out, and a couple t-shirts fell on the floor. And so I reached down and put them back in the drawer. Well, my hands were a little greasy and dirty, so I took them in, threw them in the laundry. And uh, Benny, the next day, came and got the motor home. Well, a couple days later, Margie said, where'd these t-shirts come from? And I said, well, they're in Benny's motorhome. She said, well, you better look at him. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? She said, you better look at him. Oh, uh, that's not my suit. Welcome to my house, Williams Bryce Stadium. <laughs> Best time you'll ever have with 80,250 of your closest friends. And I'm thinking, Margie, this, this can't be many. She said, you better look at the other t-shirt. I think we have a closet fan. I said, oh, you, you can have that one back. Uh, Carolina girls love their men tall, garnet, and a handsome choice. We didn't know you were a closet fan too. My son-in-law, Michael, taught me what mixed emotions was. He said, it's your mother-in-law driving over a cliff in your Cadillac. <laughs> they got mixed emotions. Uh, 
You know, Benny, it's good to be back among friends, even if they're not yours. You need to keep me that. <laughs> and I'll be brief, no matter how long it takes. You know, one thing I can tell you about Benny Green is he is not two-faced. Because if he was, he wouldn't be wearing that one, would he? <laughs> He started early. I mean, there was there were some there were some things that happened in his life early on that you just knew kind of what direction he was heading. But he wasn't hitting on all the cylinders. His his Sunday school teacher told me that one time in class when he was a little boy, she was it was the fall of the year and she was trying to build their attention to to get a story out and and she said, "Who can tell me what's gray?" Got a bushy tail and gathers nuts this time of year. Benny raised his hand. She called on him and he said, I know the answer is probably Jesus, but it sounds like a squirrel to me. <laughs> but Benny made it on through Sunday school and he got on into college and then the seminary. And you know how enthusiastic he can be about things? took the first course in seminary. It was a survey of the Bible. Come to the final exam. I talked to his professor about this. They only had one question, and that was to write about your, final, uh, your favorite Bible story. And this is what Benny wrote. The good Samaritan was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thorns. And they sprang up and choked him. And left him half dead. And he said, I will arise. And he arose and came to a tree and got caught by the hair of his head in the tree. And he hung there for 40 days and 40 nights. And the ravens fed him. Then Delilah came along and she took a pair of shears and cut his hair off and he fell on stony ground. He said, again I will arise. And he arose and came to a wall and Jezebel was sitting on top of that wall and she mocked him. And he said, chunk her down. They chunk her down. He said, chunk her down 70 times. And great was the fall thereof, and of the fragments that remained, they picked up 12 baskets full. And whose wife will she be in the resurrection? That was Benny's favorite Bible story. <laughs> now, a lot of y'all think that Benny has improved in his clarity of thought and judgment system but I'd like to remind you of what happened when his chimney caught on fire he dialed 411 <laughs> he was calm his house is burning down with Benny's not short on confidence now, though. You know, after his first sermon here at Mount Etna, he and Joyce had an intimate, off, uh, intimate moment in the hallway out there, and he was overheard saying to Joyce, Honey, did you ever in your wildest dreams imagine that I would be speaking from the pulpit of such a fine church like Mount Etna? And Joyce said, Well, no, you've never been in any of my wildest dreams. <laughs> sermon up there at his new church in Spartanburg. I told you he's confident. They're walking out and he asked Joyce, reckon how many really great speakers there are in the world? And without hesitation, she said, one less than you think. <laughs> Benny, when you get up there to Spartanburg, if you need any assistance with public relations, let me know. I got some friends in the media. <laughs> telling me that he used to be a little shy. She said he wasn't always this assertive and outgoing. I wasn't pressing her for any information. She was volunteering this. She told me that on her first date she had to slap him. Well, she's got my attention now. So I said, did he get too close to you? Did he 
trying to steal a kiss? She said, no, I thought the boy was dead. I was <laughs> so then he's come a long way. And you know, Joyce goes with him everywhere he goes. She's a busy woman too. And I said, Joyce, why do you go with him? She said, Thomas, I'd rather go with him than have to kiss him goodbye. <laughs> I came over here and George was in Benny's office and she was crying. And uh, Benny, Benny wasn't anywhere around and I didn't know what to do. So I, I asked Joyce, I said, you okay, Joyce? Is there anything I can do? She said, no. I said, well, why are you crying? She said, Benny and I had a fight. He said he wasn't going to speak to me for 30 days. Then she looked at me with tears in her eyes and said, today's the last day. <laughs> fine sermons without a doubt and I'm not saying that he's long winded but he did teach me that when a Baptist preacher in his sermon says and finally that he does not mean immediately <laughs> Alan talked about tithing and Ken talked about moving around and stuff and Cassie and I have a little bit of experience with that because whenever Benny talks about tithing I you know, I've had some difficulty putting my head around that. Uh, you know, not long after I came to Union, Benny had bought another house and he still had the one he had for sale. So he talked Cassie and me into renting his house, the one he had left. And he kept it for sale. And then, uh, you know, time went by and we were still there and we couldn't sell it and stuff. And so. One day a person was interested and they went to Benny's house to talk to him about the house that Cassie and I were living in. And they ended up buying the house Benny was living in instead of our house. So Benny threw Cassie and me out. We moved back in his old house. For a day. Then he sold it out from under his own family. Indian giver. <laughs> Benny, I've warned the realtors in Spartanburg about you. Too. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> which does not mean immediately, <laughs> there's a uh, Jewish legend that tells us that King Solomon once asked a jeweler to design a ring and inscribe words on the ring that would be true and appropriate at all times and in all situations. On bad days, the king would look at the inscription and be reassured, and on really good days, he would look at that inscription and be sobered about life. Now, you might feel that way about my talk here, and you might feel that way about Benny having come to Monette, and when you know what those words are. The words were, that were inscribed on the ring, which are always true no matter what, is, this too shall pass. <laughs> so for those of you who are upset with Benny coming to Mount Etna, it passed. <laughs> and to those of you who are sad to see Benny go, this too shall pass. And God has already identified the next leader for Mount Etna. All is well. And your job is just to find that person. Seriously, finally, Benny continued to minister to uh, my family even after we left Mount Etna. Speaker and author Charlie Tremendous Jones said, You are the same today as you were yesterday, and as you will be tomorrow, except for two things. The people you meet and the books you read. The people you meet and the books you read. There are tons and tons of people who are better off and who are saved because they met Benny and Benny shared with them the Word of God, the Holy Bible. <laughs> Benny preaches the Word and we love it. Oh, oh. 
Well, Benny, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave you with the same hopeful message that I give my wife every time she goes to the beauty shop. Good luck to you. Well, you know, I, I heard that finally, and uh, Benny, they sure won't get off without me having a few words to say, so uh, we'll have some fun. You know, I've known Benny for uh, many years. My name's Vicki Conley, and although I don't go to church here, I have worshipped with you several times, and really enjoyed my time here. Benny and I became running partners many years ago. Our families uh, shared a lot of things in common. We went camping, we went to the running races together. Uh, we just enjoyed spending time with one another. Um, Benny's always been someone that I looked up to and he, he's been a great friend. Some of y'all probably remember me when I had hair, a lot of hair, because I taught people, some of you out there. Uh, some of you probably just think I have my hair cut. But the truth is, I just idolized Benny so much I had my head shaved so I would look like Benny here. Um, I can remember many years ago, Benny actually wanted to look or be like me. It was a time in our life when he wanted to be like me. It was a time on one of our camping trips. Our families went to the beach together, out camping by the ocean. You can remember, uh, just imagine what a wonderful time that is. And the, you wake up in the morning and the sweet smell of bacon and all. And uh, actually, I had Benny in tears. I think it's the first time I've ever seen him cry because. His family fell in love with my chocolate chip pancakes and we had to toss all of his out in the <laughs> leftovers. He always called me a cheater because I put chocolate chips in my pancakes. Uh, you know, I've teased Benny since I've known him for always having a lucky horseshoe around his neck. Um, I think that's obvious in him having Joyce as his bride. He's very lucky there. Uh, also, and I've heard in some of this tonight, the with Benny owning two houses in Union and you know being the fixer-upper that he is and always likes to do it yourself, there's never anything you can mention if you say, you know, I've got to do such and such in my house. Benny's saying, hey, we can do that. We can do that. He always wants to fix it up. But Benny's a very frugal person and uh, I am too. I know Joyce, his wife is too, but um, I remember one time our families decided to go out to eat and we were going to splurge. Let's see if y'all remember this, Joyce. We all decided we were going to Outback. So, you know, we go to Outback and the line is forever. Pick on you a minute, Noah. <laughs> but this is how frugal Benny and Joyce have always been. We go and the waiter comes up and says, may I take your order, please? What would you like to drink? And Noah says, I'd like to have Dr. Thunder. <laughs> he looked at us very strange. He said, I'm sure, uh, sir, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, how about Dr. Bob? So we had to explain to Noah that uh, those were uh, generic drinks for Dr. Pepper and then move forward. <laughs> she still won't buy Dr. Pepper. Uh, she's free. <laughs> Benny and I once did a race. It was called the Mud Run. Um, it was in Greenville and uh, the first thing you did, there were probably about 30, 40 obstacles you did, but the first thing you did is you went and you dove in a pit of mud. It was about 18 inches deep. I remember diving in and Benny kicking me and my mouth was open. So I had to finish the race with mud and grit all there. So, but I paid him back a little bit because um, they had about 20 walls, probably 8, 10 feet tall. And I'm not a small boy. And I'm not a strong boy. So Benny had to push me over the walls. So, those two back surgeries, and every time your back starts hurting, you can always think about me. Uh, Benny and I became running partners many, many years ago, and he talked us into doing some of the, some of the guys here were running partners with us too. I remember Mitch and Michael and some of us all get together and run. He talked us into going to do this Midnight Madness run in Anderson. It was in August, and it must have been... 110 degrees outside and we went and they had a 5k which was a little over three miles and they had a 10k which is a little over six miles well benny being so adventurous let's do them both so we did both of them 
Yeah, it wasn't a good idea. Benny was about to die. He's about to overheat. And I remember about halfway through it, the second race, we were just dying for water. We came up to a water stop finally. And Benny grabs the water. Remember what it tastes like? It was like right out of the hose pipe, fresh out of the hose pipe. It didn't taste too good, but Benny Bow lost it that night between that and overheating. But one of the good things is they didn't give t-shirts like most races do. They gave shorts, running shorts. And I know Benny's probably worn his out because he wears them all the time. I've never worn mine. They still have the tags on them, so I'm just going to give you mine, Benny. <laughs> It looks really nice in those ones. I, I, I haven't worn mine. I know yours. <laughs> yeah. I also remember one of the first and last, probably, but uh, there was a. We decided to do a marathon. Jay Allen and Benny and myself, we were going to do a marathon. We decided to do the Myrtle Beach Marathon. We signed up for it. Michael ran it with us. Uh, Greg was our chauffeur. He took and drove us around that week. But as we were preparing for the marathon, we had a few long runs to, to uh, prepare for it. Uh, we were pretty strict with following our regimen of the training schedule. So here it is about December, January, because the marathon was in February. It's freezing cold outside. It must have been 35, 40 degrees. And we decided we would go do speed work and go out to the track at the high school. So we get out there, and somebody says, boy, people see us, they really think we're crazy out here running in this freezing cold. We're running around the track, and we run, and we run, and we run. Lo and behold, it starts to rain. So, can I use you to demonstrate? Can you stand up a minute? How about taking that, can you take your jacket off? <laughs> And I got a running shirt I want him to put on so he can demonstrate something. <laughs> I want that back though. <laughs> so, we're running and I... So we're running out at the track, and it's freezing cold outside, and it begins to rain. And men, if you've ever been a runner before, you know if your shirts get wet, it can sometimes rub your chest raw and can cause a lot of problems. So we're talking about how crazy people think we are if we're out there running when it's cold, and then it starts to rain. So Benny, will you demonstrate how we ran the rest of the night? <laughs> So we had to say, if people think we're crazy, they really think we're crazy. <laughs> and the shirts out like that. You know, back in those days, we used to... Uh... <laughs> back in those days, we just used to eat, sleep, live, breathe, running. And I had a dream one night that uh, Benny and Jay and I were going to a marathon. And this was a dream, but we were, uh, we'd been running so much, all I could think about was running. So we were on our way to the marathon, and we were in a car accident. And uh, unfortunately, none of us pulled through and made it in the car accident. And uh, we go to heaven, and St. Saint, Saint Peter meets us and takes us down. He's going to show us, you know, there are many houses for us, but he's going to show us our rooms. We get to the first place. St. Peter opens the door, and it is the ugliest woman you've ever seen in your life standing there. And St. Peter says, Mickey, for all your sins on earth, you will spend eternity with this young lady. Says, okay. Walk on down the hall a little bit. They open the door. It's a lady in there even uglier than the first one. St. Peter says, Jay, for all your sins on earth, you will spend eternity with this lady. Benny gets anxious at this point. Oh my goodness, what in the world's going to happen? So he walks on down the hall, open the door, and there's Liz Taylor. Benny's like, wow. And St. Peter says, Miss Taylor, for all your sins on earth, you will spend the night with you. 
Hey, I thank you for being such a good friend to me, for, for what you've done for Union County, for what you've done here at Monetta. Uh We sure will miss you, and I love you, buddy. That concludes this particular little time of sharing. Benny, uh, at this point, if, if you have a word or two, a rebuttal or anything that you'd like to say, uh, uh, this would be a good time to do it. Oh, wow. Uh, I'll have to say something. Now, I, know, I know this is this I just is want to clarify one thing. I, I, I want to clarify one thing. thing. Both pages, every Sunday morning, he got sermons typed up. I, just, I want to like, clarify one thing. That stuff about Don't Read, I didn't make any of it up. <laughs> Yeah. All right, we'll dismiss our panel, and Benny, you may go back and sit with your families. Okay, so that was our fun time. Uh, uh, I'd like for Dennis Russell to come up, uh, and Dennis is going, to, is going to share some comments with us. That was a tough act to follow. <laughs> Billy Green and his family came to Monette the Baptist Church. I think he said July this morning, but I, I asked Ann Hinkle, and she told me March the 11th, 1998, was your first Sunday here. In September of 2000, we dedicated the new education building. March the 29th of 2009, we dedicated the Christian Fellowship Center. Benny has been involved with the children behind us, I guess pretty much on a weekly basis. Uh, Susan was not able to be here. I think she's on vacation. But she wanted Pastor Benny to know how much she appreciated your involvement with her and the children down there. Outreach. We've got on our signs back there, we enter to worship and we depart to serve. Benny, I don't know how many times y'all went to the Kennedy home. I think it was, somebody told me four or five times. In Kinston, North Carolina, they went on a mission trip to West Virginia. Venezuela, once or twice, I couldn't remember. Just got back, a group just got back from Nicaragua. Camp Lee, three years. Uh, we started an Awana program during Benny's leadership. We have two buses out there for outreach purposes and I think they've certainly been used. I asked Ann Hinkle if she could tell me how many people had come to join Mon Etna during Pastor Benny's time with us. There was an increase in members during his time here as pastor, 491 people. And I think that's fantastic. We, we lost some people, but most of the people that we've lost, and, and, and Ann shared this information with me too, were through deaths. I think, Benny, you shared this morning about 226 funerals that you had participated in since you've been here. My brother lives in Charleston. He found out somehow, and I didn't tell him, that Brother Benny was leaving. Brother Tom Schick's been gone on a trip. 8,000 miles, I believe, at the time, and I told Brother Tom while he was on his trip that Pastor Benny was leaving us. My brother called me and he says, I never will forget Pastor Benny and his family ministering to us when my mother passed away. Benny Green, I guess since Dorita, his mother's sister, before mother passed away, it was usually a lot of teasing with Ethel Russell. And he did that because he loved her. I asked several people, as we were thinking about the serious part of the program tonight, when you think of Pastor Benny Green, what's the first thought that comes to your mind? What's the first thought that comes to your mind? These are some of the things that people told me when I asked them this question. The number one thing was, he's very caring. He's very compassionate to everyone that he comes in contact with. 
They told me this, and I wasn't going to say it because usually I say South Carolina most of the time, but they said Clemson fan. Hey, finally get a chance to say something about that. Concerned about the church members, goes out of his way to make people feel welcomed and comfortable, whether they're church members or not. He's patient. He's kind. He's humble. This morning in my Sunday school class, I told my class members Eric had taught the lesson, and I said, before you can leave, if you would, I gave him a little slip of paper. And I said, I don't want your names, but I said, would you write down what you think, what your first thoughts are about Benny Green? This is one up here. It says, very loving and caring pastor who is willing to put his members before himself. And I think that pretty much says a whole lot about Benny Green. A sincere Christian man. I think Jerry's is going to say this. We said it several times this morning. So Jerry's, you can say it again. This is what they wrote on that piece of paper. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. He's a planner. He's persistent. I like to listen to him pray. I think one of the things that Benny and I would like to have, and, and I think one of the books we've been going through is radical. And we, we talked about the ninth chapter today, which was the last chapter in that book. And the pastor there, he asked... The, the, in the ninth chapter, he asked us to do four things over the next year. And one of those was to pray every day. And one of the things I want to challenge Mount Atlanta Baptist Church to do over the next year is to pray every day. Pray for our church. Pray for Pastor Benny Green and his family as they're going to a new ministry. Persistent prepared, positive, enthusiastic. I told Michael this morning, it was a great service. I hated it had to be the last Sunday that our pastor was going to be here. But wow, wasn't it a great service. And I hope we will have many more occasions here at Mont the Baptist Church to say wow, because God is good. And all the time, God is good. Comfort giving during the loss of a family member. I shared that about what my brother said. He says, I want you to let Brother Benny Green know how much he meant to us during the loss of my mother, our mother. I asked Tom Schick that question. That's the first thing that came out of Tom Schick's mouth. The comfort that Benny and his family gave to me during the loss of a loved one. A lot of others in this congregation tonight can say that. One thing I want to do before I finish my comments. Those of you who have come to Monette the Baptist Church since Benny has been the pastor, would you stand up? Thank you so much. David? Okay, thank you. I know you do, Margaret. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, encourager. A family man. I started writing down some things and I think you can see some of these things here on the front of the tables that we've got. I guess somebody told me, and not, not just about being green. Benny, I already said you were patient. But they said the same thing about Joyce Green. Both of them were very patient. You can see down here tonight their family. And Benny and Joyce, not only did they have the Mont Etna family, but they had their family too. And y'all have been a blessing to us. And we're gonna, we're really gonna miss you. A teacher, a pastor, a preacher. This is another one that my class wrote down, and it was probably the, I think my brother-in-law, I said I wasn't gonna use her name, but I think this may have been his too, or it could have been Michael Walker's. A wonderful friend. And then this was, this was my Sunday school class. A godly, loving, and very special friend. Doesn't mind hard work. He does not mind. You saw some slides tonight earlier. When they went on mission trips, when we went to Camp Lee, I've seen some preachers 
what they do, they sort of sit back and they supervise. Benny Green doesn't do that. He doesn't mind getting in there and getting his hands dirty and working. And those of you who've been off with him can say the same thing. And then I called Barrel Bailey. And I said, Barrel, I'm, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? I said, I'm not going to use your name, but since Barrel's not here to defend himself, I think, I, think this is, I think this is very important. He said, Benny Green and his family did a lot of things for children in this church and outside of this church. And nobody ever knew that they did it because that's the type of people that they are. And then finally, whoop, shining light. And then the final thing that some of my class members wrote this morning was the word love. And the way that I wanted to close my part tonight, there was a verse that I thought of, and Benny used it this morning in his sermon. We had an early morning meeting this morning, and I set my clock last night before I went to bed, and I said, that'll give me plenty of time to get up and be here for the radical discussion at 8.30. At 5.19 this morning, God woke me up. And he started talking to me about tonight's service and how we would be honoring our pastor. Philippians 1 3. This was the verse that I was going to use. It says, and he used it this morning. I thank my God every time I remember you. But then after I got the note and after Benny used it in his sermon this morning, and the note said love. And I thought about 1 Corinthians the 13th chapter. And it says, if I speak in the tongues of men and angels but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I taught like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away childish, I put my childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. But then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And this is the part right here that I think tells us about Pastor Benny Green and his family. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Pastor, we love you and we know you've loved us. And I just want to say thank you. Jerry Starner, Chairperson of Personnel Committee, come on down. Okay, my part on the program as Chairman of the Personnel Committee is to make a presentation to Benny and Joris. But before I do that, I just, I've got a couple of comments I want to, to make to the two of you, and especially to you, Benny. Um, I need to tell you that uh, my sisters and I have been members of this church since the day we were born. 
um, Herman Crocker told me the other Sunday, did I, asked me if did I know how long he had been handing me a bulletin. And I said, yeah, I think it was since I had the beginner pamphlet in one hand and you were giving me a bulletin in the other one. So we've always been involved here. And needless to say, we've been through several pastors in those years. But as I started to think about this presentation and what we wanted to, to have for you two and what we wanted to say, I had to think back over the last 13 years and um, how what a privilege it's been to call you not only my pastor but to call you my friend since the very day you came here. And um, I had to think about some of the things that uh, came to my mind as we talked, as I thought about this. And one uh, was that you stood with us when Bob's mother passed away and you took time to learn about her and to, to learn who she was enough to do her funeral. And then uh, when our mother became ill, you spent a lot of time with us. You brought Krista and Joyce to, to see her and spend time with her. You were beside her bed when she went to be with her Heavenly Father. And then you stood with us as, as we did the funeral. Um, you were Barbara and Dennis, just as they said, as, uh, as Miss Russell was really sick and, and during her funeral. But there's been happy times, too, not only the sad times. You married both of two of us, boys. Uh, you baptized two of our grandsons. And just this morning, you baptized Barbara and Dennis's grandson, Michael. So, there's been a lot of times that, that we've shared, and I could go on and on. But uh, I just want you to know that uh, it's been an honor to call you my pastor, and it's certainly been an honor to call you my friend. I guess now is the time that I'll have to learn to say former pastor, but I just want you to know I'll always call you my friend. If y'all would come up, please. And I promise you, after the service this morning, we did not run out and get this plaque made. You just really made it be a God thing that helped us get to this point. Because if you look at the plaque, it says, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. And also says, Pastor Benny Green, in sincere appreciation for your many years of unselfish dedication, service, and love to Mount Etna Baptist Church. March 9, 1998 through June 26, 2011. And then, um, and Joyce, I'll give this one to you. Inside this envelope, you'll find a gift card for a two day stay at the <laughs> Grove Park Inn. <laughs> at the Grove Park Inn. We love you and we appreciate you being our pastor and pastor's wife and we'll miss you. closing prayer uh, in, in the blessing uh, for the reception downstairs. So, so after she prays, uh, all of you, please join us downstairs in the fellowship hall for a reception. Ola Jean. Hilda told me that the first thing I was to do was to ask Joyce and Benny to lead your family out when we do at our uh, reception downstairs. Tonight, I want to take you back to 14 years ago last month. I was sitting the fourth row from the back. We were without a pastor. And Dr. Herbert Garrett, a godly retired minister, was serving as our interim. And that night, he spoke to us about the process of finding a new shepherd for my Edna. And he called the church to a season of prayer for 30 days. And he asked us to open our Bibles to the fifth chapter of James and to underline beginning with the last sentence in verse 16 and going through verse 18. And it says this, 
The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. And again he prayed, and it rained, and the earth produced crops. And so he asked us to pray, to read that, those verses, and to pray for our future shepherd every day for 30 days. And at the end of 30 days, we began the search. And as the pastor told you last week, mine was the first bird, first voice that he and Joyce heard. Joyce, I called you that night, and you had a sore throat, I think, and you were home that night. And uh, the preacher called me back. When he and his family came for what we call our trial sermon, I had the flu. I never did get to hear that sermon, How's Your Love Life? Of course, as a widow, that's a loaded question, right? <laughs> but I was home that day with the flu, and as soon as the votes were counted, my telephone rang. And this voice said, Miss Oba Jean, this is your pastor, Benny Green. And so I knew that we had hit a home run that we not only had a good preacher, but we had a pastor. Now those two characteristics are not mutually exclusive, but they're really hard to come by. But I didn't know that a home run was a grand slam until I met Joyce, and Amber, and Benjamin, and Krista, and Noah, and now Philip. We got a package deal. You know, and sometimes in church circles they call talk about a twofer. You get a preacher whose wife plays piano. <laughs> we got a total package. And Northbrook is indeed a blessed church. Thank you for all that you've done for me personally. You've been my dear, dear friends. For what you've done for my Netna, for the kingdom, for this community. And now we're going to have our prayer. Don't forget, we want the pastor and his family to go first. Will you pray with me? Lord, change is so difficult. The writer of the old hymn said, O thou that changest not, abide with me. And so, Lord, I ask you now to abide with the Green family and with the Monadna family. Direct our thoughts and our actions in the days ahead. Give us wisdom in all that we have to do and faithfulness to the task which you set before us. Help us to remember your dear, dear promise. I will never leave you or forsake you. Thank you for loving us, for bearing with us, for patience and long suffering. And I ask you now to bless our time together of food and fellowship. Thank you for our many friends who've come to share this celebration with us. Bless us all, our homes, our churches, our families, and bring glory to yourself through what is done. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs>